All righty, we are live. Welcome everyone to the second episode of my podcast. Um, today we are going to be diving into stage one of change, and this is the stage of pre-contemplation. So what exactly does pre-contemplation mean? For the most part, it means that people in general, are not thinking seriously about changing, and you are not interested in any kind of help. So let me dive into that a little bit deeper and show you different scenarios of what that could look like and what that could mean. So people in the pre-contemplation stage of change are usually very defensive about their current bad habit or bad habits, all right? Let's sit with that for a second. Second. Have you had so many people, one person, two people, it doesn't really matter the number, but have you said, have you heard from people and have they said, geez, you know, maybe you might want to think about changing X, Y, and Z. And you're like, no, I'm not going to do that. Why would I do that? I'm perfectly fine doing that, right? You're going to find yourself being defensive. And being defensive is a problem for several reasons. One, when we are typically defensive as human beings, almost always we recognize that what the other person is saying is a vulnerability within ourselves or something within ourselves that we don't like and that we have not changed, we have tried to change it, or we've just slightly thought about changing it. And we tend to defend our position if we're feeling extremely comfortable where we are, right? That's usually the only time we tend to get like super defensive about any sort of change, change that is pointed out to us, change that is brought to our attention that might need to happen. All right, let me dive dive into that a little bit deeper. So let's take, for instance, um, change of, I, I don't know, there's controversy out there about drinking coffee. So let's just pick that um, very simple um, thing that so many people do, right? We have coffee shops everywhere. So there's controversy out there whether caffeine is good, whether caffeine is bad. I'm not taking a position either way. I'm not a medical professional. I'm just using coffee as an example. So say you drink coffee in the morning and you drink it all throughout the whole entire day and you are irritable and you find that you have a hard time going to sleep at night. You find that you have a hard time staying asleep and somebody says to you, geez, do you think it's the coffee? It's, do you think maybe it's all that caffeine? No, it's not the caffeine. It can't possibly be the caffeine. I've been drinking coffee since I was eight years old, blah, 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 right? So you go down this whole rant of defending your coffee coffee drinking versus taking a look. So someone who is moving out of the pre-contemplation stage of change, they may have sat and thought like, hmm, I don't really know if I should be drinking this much coffee. And again, this is just an example, just using coffee as an example, because again, I'm not a medical doctor. I don't want to be giving medical advice, but um, you're going to defend your position of change if you are in the pre-contemplation phase of change. And that doesn't mean that you can't shift to the next stage, which I will be covering on my next episode of my podcast. So be sure you tune into that. Um, but in the pre-contemplation stage of change, you typically as a person, not you in general, you, I mean, not you specifically, but you as in general, us as overall human beings, right? We do not feel like drinking coffee all day long is a problem. So we're not going to change it. And again, that is going to make us extremely defensive. And in my experience, for those of you who don't know, I have been working with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, group basis, um, for over 20 years, 20, almost 25 years at this point, say, just to round it up to a nice round number. And my experience is <laughs> when people are in a great position of defending themselves, it's because mm, they have identified areas that they don't really like. So 
that's where that defensiveness comes in. So let me let me leave you with this for today. If you find yourself getting defensive instantly with people, I want you to sit back and I want you to ask yourself these few questions. One, I want you to really take a look at what that external trigger, right? The person saying that you really should change something. I want you to take a look at who is that person? Who are they to you? What do they mean to you? And then the second thing I want you to take a look at is why them saying that causes like your internal temperature to go way up, right? Why does it cause you to get so defensive? Why does it cause you to protect the thing that they're saying that, I don't know, maybe you should change, right? Take a look at those two things because that's going to help you identify if you are going to shift out of the pre-contemplation phase of change in your overall general life, or if you're really just going to continue to do what it is that you're going to do, then you wouldn't have that internal temperature change, right? You wouldn't jump to defensiveness. You would just say, no, I like coffee. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep drinking it. So that's how you can tell the difference between if you have identified somewhere within you that change needs to take place, you're going to get defensive, your internal temperature is going to go up and it's it's not going to, feel very good versus if you have no responses whatsoever and you simply just say, "Hmm, I like it. So I'm going to keep doing it. Um, Thank you so much for your time. I truly appreciate it and value it. Thank you for being here and be sure you tune in tomorrow for stage two of the six stages of change.